So this boy managed to get his mouth while my hands were like this and do that to my lips. Hello everyone, welcome to part two of my two-part series in today's video, in I guess today's second half of this video. I'm going to be talking about my abusive quarantine relationship. We are using the name Dan in this video and the only reason I split it into two parts is because I just realized I've been filming for a whole hour for the other part. Just so I don't have hour long videos on my channel, I was like might as well just make it a second part because it's kind of like a second half of the story. And so I told you guys about the first part which is the first time I was ever involved in domestic violence and physical, mental, and emotional abuse. And then this part is the part where, you know, all that happened. I, I got this guy out of my life for two weeks minimum. It was probably like three weeks. He found a way to creep back into my life, even though I was so, so strong at first. And inevitably it got worse. So uh, this is unfortunately the worst part. Worse Eh, they're equally bad. So this part is gonna be how I got out of my situation and encouraging you guys to get out of the situation that you might be in. And even if you haven't, and obviously you don't plan on being in a situation like this, I'm gonna be sharing, you know, some red flags that you should stay away from. If you want a whole separate video on red flags, I can totally make that video. I don't want this to be like too prominent on my channel. You know, I was a domestic violence victim, but I don't wanna be defined by that because it's something that happened my life but it does not define me and I hope you guys know that if something like this happens in your life you don't need to be a victim as long as you rise above and become the bigger and better person and heal that's all that matters so yeah I guess we'll get into the second part so like I said I, this is where like it still gets pretty blurry like I said I was like partying a lot and I think it's just my trauma like the way I deal with trauma is I just black it out so I disassociate it from myself or whatever that happened it was very very hard to deal with physically and emotionally obviously i was basically in shock for a really long time and didn't know what to do it was like two weeks of me being very very strong i had blocked him on everything literally everything except for twitter dms it's weird i needed some sort of contact just to see so it's like i would block him on twitter and then unblock him so it would go to my it was just so psycho like he turned me into a psycho like i had never had this behavior before i've never blocked a significant other not even a friend which is not who i am i they're always very civil i'm not a confrontational person i'm not a fighter i'm a lover i straight up and just a lover but it came to the point where i blocked him on every Everything except for Twitter DMs because I could block them and unblock them and he'd still tweet me or message me and if I opened it and it wouldn't say that I saw it but I wanted to see what he had to say you know what I mean like some weird psychological shit and so he would you know just pour his heart out to me just be like I didn't mean anything I have no idea what happened blah 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 it came to the point that I would message him back every once in a while and be like I'm just saying this because you need to figure this out like you need help because I know that if it wasn't me it would be someone else and this isn't like a way to live and it's quite frankly scary and you shouldn't be comfortable with yourself living like this it's just sad and i am a mender i kind of am like i'm like the therapist friend who needs the most therapy i tweeted that the other day right here follow me on twitter self promo i'm totally the friend that needs the most therapy that tries to like be the therapist for my friends because I just feel like everyone needs that friend and I don't know some people will say it's energy vampiring and not healthy and I can see that too but it's just what I like to do I like to help my friends out I'm learning to have boundaries with that though okay <laughs> so it came to the point where I was like I'm not gonna text you back I'm not gonna see you unless you get so like someone to talk to like get help which is like not necessarily healthy because people aren't gonna get help unless they need it but i'm like if you really want me this bad then that's what it's gonna have to take a kind of like an ultimatum type situation so that happened and of course he's like yeah i've talked to my mom she's setting up therapy blah 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 i think this guy was like kind of a compulsive liar because there's all these things that like i could see happening but later on i found out that his mom had no idea anything happened at all so i'm over here like yes like your family is wealthy you can deal with 
with this like you you can you know do this but at the same time buy me some therapy no <laughs> but seriously i would message him back and he'd be like you know his main thing was like let me get all my clothes back let me get all my clothes back and i'll be like okay you know i'll have my friend my roommate put him outside the door and he's like no i need it like i need it to come from you and i'm like this is just your ploy of getting me back and manipulating me again and i knew it was happening like i knew it was happening but he was so adamant and like in this weird sense of the way my brain was like oh him being so adamant about this it just shows his love you know what i mean because i think that he thinks he loved me but i don't think that he knows what love is and i'm in the wrong in this situation because i know what love is and i know what unconditional love is and i still let this happen to me i guess so eventually he was like can i get my stuff back and get one hug and i said yeah so i brought his stuff out to the car gave him a hug and he's like i just need five minutes a day and i said no you can get five minutes a week once a week on a sunday i'll come out to the car i'm gonna tell everyone where i am and say if you get any text from me it's an sos i'm gonna be like i put so many boundaries i said five minutes and i shouldn't have even done that but i'm so bad at saying no especially in person that's why he wanted to see me in person because no matter how many times i said no to him him, like it wasn't it wasn't acceptable you know what i mean like would not unlock the car unless i agreed to see him again that happened once a week for two or three weeks and then our thing that we would do is go golfing and i got a new set of golf clubs for christmas and he's the only person who ever would go and so he was like my family's going golfing they don't know we have problems i love his family like we mentioned in the last video and he was like please please come at this point it was two weeks later but i still had like a black eye I was covering up. I w was just hopeless. I couldn't hang out with people because I didn't want them to see me like this. I didn't want to tell my family and friends because I didn't know what I was going to do about the situation yet. And I, for some reason, agreed to it. And I agreed to it and it went really great, of course, because these master manipulators, these abusers are very, very good at telling you what you want to hear, showing you what you want to hear when you're in your power until they get you out of your power. So I was in my power the first couple of times we hung out and I was staying strong, not relationship -y at all like would not kiss him like I was just like okay this is how it is and then of course that all creeps up if you've been there before then you know and basically fast forward he was turning psycho again and I said no I'm cutting you off completely before it gets too bad what happened was there was almost another incident I brought him to the old bar I worked at where someone that used to date was there and he thought something happened and he went to the bathroom which is just not it didn't happen at all it's like literally just his mind told him that and he came out and he like just punched a wall and then left and i said what the fuck was that so my dumb ass walked over and i was like what's going on he was like i saw what happened i was like what are you talking about like actually nothing happened like we probably said hi you know what i mean like like when you see someone you know in public you say hi i don't know anyways so that happened and he was like let's bring it to the streets where there's no cameras which is such a fucking red flag oh my gosh like what like what so yeah nothing's happening like you're being just so dumb and he was my ride and i didn't have money to get an uber it's so so much worse when you're not independently financially stable that's the goal of 2021 you guys not letting anyone push you around because you can't afford to not have them wow that's such a freaking Wow, slap in the face. Anyways, it came to the point where he kicked me out of the car, like physically kicked me out of the car. And I was like, okay, I'm not doing this today. I closed the door. I said, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Like I would do anything for him to like, just never talk to me ever again. And he was like, no, obviously I'm not gonna leave you on the street. Like, because these like bystanders were watching. God bless this man. I, I don't know his name and I wish I did. He was a really, really bigger gay man. So it's a scary situation where there's a bunch of guys around you and you're like, someone wants to save the day, but now I'm like, I don't trust any men. Like this man, I literally thought, like, let sleep next to me. I realized has the potential and almost did kill me. And, you know, for some reason I get along really well with gay men. And just because you know they don't have any alternative motives. This guy was so, so nice. And thank God bless these guys on the street because they could tell I was not okay. And they did not let me go back in the car with him. And they, like, forced him to leave. Like, basically said they were going to beat him up if he didn't leave. Which, like, obviously, I don't think that would have happened 
happened but that needed to happen for it to not escalate further because it almost did the whole time he was just screaming about how he couldn't wait to fuck his ex-girlfriend and all this just terrible terrible things it came to the point where yeah i was on the street alone and he walked me back to my apartment my apartment was like three or four miles away and i think you know he didn't know me either so he wasn't like comfortable driving me back which is totally fine but i needed to like let things out anyway so this man was my therapist for a four hour walk in the freezing cold in what september and he was my guardian angel that night and i really love humans and if you're watching this which you're probably not god bless you and i owe you my life it's a whole different type of hurt when you really think you might die and i love being alive i really do even though this world is fucked up and there's a lot of fucked up people here there's still so much to live for so much Anyways, we walk back. He's telling me about how this happened with one of his boyfriends before and how, you know, he thought it made him love him more because he fought for him, physically fought for him. You know what I mean? It, it's such a weird psychological concept that you think that that person likes you because they're physically fighting for you guys to stay together when that's literally the opposite of what love should be and is so anyways he was telling me all that and then we got to my car at my apartment and then i drove him to his car because we like gained each other's trust and i hugged him goodbye and i thanked him for my life and thanked him for listening to me I was a mess. I was a mess. I've never cried so much to a stranger. It's not like I didn't have anyone, but I was just embarrassed to tell my close friends about the extent of it. They knew that it wasn't a healthy relationship, but they didn't know the extent of it. And then I blocked him on everything, on everything. And unfortunately, he had a lot of mutual friends with me, but I encouraged a lot of my friends and always like if you love me you please block him or unfriend him or just not post when I'm there not or not post me because I knew if I was there he would try to find a way to get there and let me just say that everyone's like why didn't you get a restraining order I sh this all happened so fast within weeks that like I didn't even know where to begin to put my brain also in the back of my mind I'm like this guy doesn't even have a car so thank god like in a way like i'm like i don't think he can follow me my camera died <laughs> my friends all had my back like they didn't want to hang out with him they knew that he wasn't a good person but yeah it is what it is i guess the last bit of the story is yeah i was good i was doing good as good as i could do in this scenario and it came to a point where it was homecoming night and the old bar i used to work at the bars in cincinnati were reopened they said we need an extra set of hands for a substitute bartender just to like get our staff like a little break throughout the day and they said i would love if you could come in for a couple hours sarah and i said oh my gosh that's amazing I would love to all my friends work there still so it was like a lot of fun to like be able to just get my mind off everything and like work behind the bar again because it's just i just love it i have a lot of regulars there and such so i agreed to go there after my other shift my like marketing shift like throughout the day so i worked like nine to five and then i got off and i was supposed to go in at six like six to ten because our bars close at ten and i didn't have time to eat i was like oh hopefully they'll have like some snacks there or something which they did but i didn't have time to eat it so well we're behind the bar making drinks i take a shot or so obviously get a little tipsy fast because i haven't had anything in my system don't do that kids M number one mistake i have all these regulars they're excited for me to be back and they're posting pictures and videos of me behind the bar and i'm just like having a good time smiling the most i've smiled in a long time since this whole whole thing happened and I guess the word got out to Dan and which I hope I'm saying Dan this whole time I might have to bleep out a lot of his name and say that <laughs> but he ended up seeing that I was working there and he was supposed to be 100% banned obviously homecoming is a very big event in college and it's hard to manage honestly and what happened was he came up I'm like in my zone when I'm bartending so I only pay attention to the person right in front of me so it wasn't until I got through like 50 people in line and he was right in front of me and I was a little tipsy and I literally didn't know what to say I said kind of like faked it I was just like oh how are you doing like welcome to the bar what can I get for you and he was just saying Saying nonsense and just kind of sucking up to me and making it seem like he's like this perfect human I guess he gets me to come talk to him around the corner so I take my little break and I'm like what do you want what are you doing here please just leave I just 
I can't do this tonight. Like, I'm on the job. Like, I'm working. I should have gotten security right away to get him. But I, I mean, there was so much going on. There wasn't enough security for what was going on. But I was a little tipsy. So I, like, whatever. He comes and talks to me around the corner. And that's when he starts to get really, really snappy and starts arguing. And what happens is one of my really good friends calls me. I have a lot of guy friends. It, it happened to be a guy. He didn't even look at the name. But he just saw that someone was calling me at, like, 9 p.m. Probably to get into the bar I was working and he saw it come up on my phone and he started screaming in the middle of the bar i said this is my place of employment you cannot do this you need to leave i walk him outside and he kind of like pulls me out and i was like we are not getting outside of the camera view i'm standing right here like you're you just need to go like tell me what you have to say and then go when he started like doing this to me like he was gonna hurt me again like he was so so angry about this person that called me even though he knows i have a ton of guy friends and i am not like even if i was single i'm not like a flirt like that i'll mess around with one guy at a time maybe if not i'm just 100 percent on my own and i was barely single at that point like and especially after all this trauma obviously i'm not going to talk to a guy for a second unless they like really really give me reason to trust them so i you know was trying to say all that but i'm like you don't deserve an explanation like even if it was a guy i was talking to you are not in my life anymore like for a reason you are not okay and i basically said like you need to get out you need to leave and like i said he kept like checking me like that and then he lifts his arms and i have so much trauma at this point i've like thought about what i'm gonna do if i get attacked again so i like grabbed his arms like this while he like he like had squeezed me in my stomach and like too hard like under my ribs and hurt like i knew he was intending to hurt me right so he like kept doing that like kind of like started throwing his hands and i grab luckily was like there enough to like grab his arms in time so that i was like using all my might to like not let him like move his arms let me just tell you he's very very muscular he works out like every day for his job is basically playing basketball at school so i was doing that and then you know after a while he like actually was trying to like headbutt me and i was like there's no way like i kept doing that and he managed this boy managed to get his mouth while my hands were like this and do that to my lip and this man went almost so close to all the way through it's so much worse i have a hell of makeup on it this thing went almost all the way through my lip and it literally was gushing blood literally everywhere i have never had to get stitches in my life i've never had such a big gash i'll show you the gash i don't know if you can even see it i might have to put like a picture up you see that i don't know if you can see that i'll put a picture. oh there you go it's basically Whatever. You get the point. It was basically a really big gash. I was traumatized. Literally never had so much blood. Like, I've been very lucky, knock on wood, to not been, like, injured like that. So, of course, he plays hero. This is probably part of his whole ploy. Um, he played hero, and he brought me to the hospital. And as soon as we walked in, the nurses, thank God for them, understood what was going on. And they said, we're going to have to take her back by herself. And they said, do you want me to make him leave? And I said yes please like literally do anything to make this guy leave he's still texting me at this point i can't believe you had a guy call you not doesn't even care how hurt i am oh my gosh like what what i do to like make you move on so fast blah 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 blah, blah. and i'm like what like you you've met this guy before like you guys have hung out like and it's literally like a friend that's not even like besides the point besides the point is i was gushing blood and i was not okay and i was in the hospital and he didn't care he was like why are the nurses telling me to leave i'm like because i'm not safe with you you are my abuser and i am your victim and it just didn't it didn't like click with him if you've been abused before you know that there's a flip and it just switches and there's no thinking there's just doing and he's like he would stay in that for like a second and I ended up having to get five stitches. I had to get four that like I had to get taken out and then one dissolvable one like on my lip. Like a better, better picture of like the next morning. Oh my gosh. Thank God that it was the time in life where we had to wear masks because it was so ugly. When I did Snapchat, like just of course because I blacked out everything like just pretending to go on with my life. When I did Snapchat, people would be like, is that chocolate? I'm like, no, it's a long story. Like blah, blah, blah. Wow. <laughs> I haven't cried in this section of the video and I don't want to, but going through these, I like was screenshotting a lot of inspirational things and I can't, I just can't believe I was sad. Like 
ending things for good with him even after this so i officially blocked him on everything and i'm happy to say i have never talked to him ever ever again after that and but it should never take going to the hospital to realize that and luckily I got out of it when I did because this guy did not make it easy. He made emails, sent emails to me every single day. It wasn't until I had to get in contact with his family and say this guy, this is what happened and he needs to not talk to me ever again. And they had to tell him, but then at that point he wouldn't go home. It was crazy, but yeah, I screenshot this thing that said, it's okay to be sad after making the right decision. Still, after all of that, I was sad. And these doctors said, you're going to look in the mirror every single day and be reminded why you deserve better. And it's not because I'm a better person than him. It's because nobody deserves to be treated that way. And I came to the point in 2020 and in my life where I, I thought I deserved to be treated that way. And in my weird, messed up mind, I thought that if it wasn't me, it would be someone else. So I'd rather it be me. I'd rather hurt than have someone else hurt. But no one should hurt nobody violence is never the answer never like i don't even i know what to follow that with there's so much going on in the world today especially today i'm filming this i guess it was yesterday but today i'm filming this on january 7th 2021 and yesterday it was january 6 2021 when everyone raided the capitol building and chose violence and with everything with black lives matter the police chose violence and violence has never helped anybody get what they want even get what they deserve it's only helped bring more hate into this world, bring more trauma and problems. And this is just me encouraging you guys to always be the bigger person. Never choose violence. And as much as a lot of people think that I should give him what he did to me, I'm gonna step up and be the bigger person. That doesn't mean I'm not getting the law enforcement involved. Don't worry, I'm handling it the way I should. I'm figuring out how to handle it right now. It's a big process. But... Of course. <laughs> It's actually absurd how long this has been going on. Anyways, now that the comedic relief is over, let me read. This one says, breakups are okay, starting over is okay, moving on is okay, saying no is okay, and being alone is okay. What is not okay is staying somewhere where you are not happy, valued, or appreciated. That is not okay. You guys, it's just not okay. There is not enough time in the day to be with someone or to be someone that doesn't make you happy. I thought that I was gonna help him. I thought I could change him. You can't change anyone and you can't change anyone who doesn't want to be changed. Sometimes all you have to do is walk away even though it's the hardest thing there is to do. And if you're in a place, in a relationship with a friend, with a family member or with a significant other where you feel like you need to walk away but you don't know if you can physically handle it, you don't know if you can mentally handle it, it. just know that there are billions of people that have been where you are and they just haven't spoken up about it and they've made it through and become so much bigger people so much better people because of it and you are not a victim to your circumstance if this happened to you you don't understand how many times i was like why did you know why did the universe think that this is the lesson i needed why did god think that this is what was for my path and there's a path for everyone but it's all up to the decisions you make every day the little decisions that are gonna get you where you need to be and it's crazy as soon as i cut him out from my life immediately all of my other relationships started just falling into place putting your energy into the wrong people especially in a time like this when there's nothing but energy to give and receive is one of the worst things that you can do what's even harder is realizing who it is you want in your life and who you don't and what they say is you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time around birds of the same feather flock together and for some reason i took 2020 and i thought you know maybe this can be just like a year off like we can just do whatever whenever there's no rules there's no rules at all except for you know stay six feet apart wear a mask you know do your part for society but it's almost like from the beginning of when this all happened i was like oh i'm gonna erase, erase this from my memory anyways but no day should go wasted no period should go wasted 2021 should definitely not go wasted we all made it through 2020 and it was a very very hard year for a lot of us and i know statistically a lot of domestic violence happened in 2020 than it did in the past 100 years because people were spending too much time together they got too comfortable around each other and it took a turn for the worse and if that happened to you i'm so sorry 
and I'm there with you and I'm there for you and I th really think that we can come together on this channel and rise above because it's what we deserve and it's what the world deserves each and every one of us are main characters in our own life that is going to sway someone else's decision it's all the butterfly effect is so crazy to me one little decision you make is gonna change the world whether you like it or not it's gonna change someone's world which is ultimately gonna change everyone's world because everyone's connected everyone's connected to everything and nothing at the same time it's crazy <sighs> I don't know if this video was as inspiring as my breakup video or just straight up depressing, but all I know is speaking about it to the camera fully is something that I'm really proud of that I did because I've tried this like five times before and I can't get through it. It's almost because I like almost don't want to accept that this happened to me. But I think the coolest thing about YouTube and this platform that we have is that no matter what, we're gonna be able to come together and rise above. That's the weird fucked up thing about being at, at your very lowest, is that it can only go up from there. And there's something so satisfying and peaceful about that. And you guys, it's 2021, Biden is president. It can only go up from here. And so I hope you guys stick around on my channel because I'm very, very excited for the content coming. I'm planning it all out very strategically rather than in the past where I just throw up a video when I can. If you think that this is the tone of every video, you're very mistaken. I'm usually very, very happy, very giggly, laughy girl. And I'm just really, really thankful that you guys are still sticking with me. I've been on this platform for almost 10 years. And I haven't treated you guys with the consistency you deserve. And honestly, with the transparency you deserve. Because I feel like I should have talked about this, maybe not earlier, but I should have known that my power before I even let any of this happen to me. I'm not saying that I'm powerful. We are all powerful beings, you guys. And I'm not any different because I have a channel. I'm just, I guess, brave enough to let the world hear about it. And I'm so nervous for my family to see this. And I'm so nervous for some friends to see this. And I'm embarrassed that if they are seeing this for the first time, it's on a platform for, for the world to see. But I really recommend if you guys are going through something, even if you never post it ever, turn on your camera and talk to yourself about it like you're talking to someone else. It's helped me so much. Uh, just sitting here today, I've sat here for the past four hours just talking to this box in front of me. And I'm hoping it will change someone's life. And it's already changed my life. I feel very accomplished. And I feel like I can now let go fully to this heartbreak, fucked up situation that shouldn't happen to anyone. And I want you guys to know that it will never happen to me again. Ever. And I've seen red flags. And I'll go through a couple, but if you want me to do a whole vi video on red flags, I'd love to do that. Anyone who's gonna take you away from the people you love the most. Anyone who's gonna say they love you but not give you any reasons why. Anyone who's gonna say they love you but not show it one bit. Anyone who thinks that their life is worth ruining yours. Anyone who thinks it's okay to steal someone's money, someone's car, someone's dignity, and someone's confidence. The list goes on. If you guys have any good red flags, comment them down below. If you wanted to share your story, I'd love to have an open conversation in the comment section. If you guys want to subscribe, if you're new here, that would mean the world to me. I'm super, super excited for this content. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, that's weird to say because it was not, not something necessarily enjoyable, but I'm glad that we are on the same page now of why I might have been acting the way I was in 2020 and while I'm acting the way I am moving forward in 2021, I'm more sensitive than ever, but I'm also more strong than ever. It's a weird, what's the word, paradox. But yeah, I love you guys so much. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey.